Okay, sounds good. Alright, sounds good. Alrighty. We are gonna go ahead and get started. So, XGRA Global, this is going to be the fastest uh, possible configuration for XGRA. It's basically the 200cc equivalent if we're going with Mario Kart terms. And we play through seven races, each with a slightly different race style. We're gonna go and get started. And that is three, two, one, and go. I'm gonna try my best to get off to a good start and we'll have plenty of time to talk about the game in a little bit. So three different split paths up here. One of them that despite playing this game for like 10 years, I didn't know about until a month ago. So that's pretty fun and also embarrassing all at the same time. This is the first demonstration of an extreme weather race. An extreme weather race meaning, guess what? It's snowing. Fortunately, that doesn't actually affect our traction, but it does make it really hard to see, especially when you're going at absurd speeds. Uh, part of me kind of wishes that when you had races in the snow, it made traction worse, but that would actually be awful, and I'm kind of glad they decided to not do that. Same with the ones that are in extreme rain. So, as I'm cruising along here, you see me grabbing these little green blips, and these are our power-ups, which is what lets us use uh, this game's pretty unique weapon system. Every vehicle has a standard weapon, which is basically just like some sort of gun, and in this case I have missiles, but those aren't really going to be a factor, because what we're concerned with here is going fast, and in going fast, we want the third item, which is the Accelerator, which does exactly what its name suggests. And it's basically what makes this game as broken as it is, in that it is a very straightforward racing game. But imagine if you were just cruising along and every time I picked up three of these, I got a seven second speed boost. And as long as I picked up another three before that speed boost ends, I can get another one, and another one, and I can just keep chaining those together the entire time, and I can be at basically max speed the entire way. That's what we're really looking at here. And if I miss one, I kind of know where all the backups are, because I've been playing this game for a long time. And we just keep on rolling. Uh, times are pretty good so far. I kind of just like to glance down at my lap times to see how well things are going. So far that's, you know, not too bad. I've made a few small mistakes, but we're basically where we want to be. Slide on over here, and the whole time I'm just kind of keeping track because I know that, oh, uh, I know that pretty soon I'm gonna lap everybody, and when I do that, all of a sudden all these AI units that I'm not really worried about too much are gonna start stealing all my stuff and I have to kind of come up with backups because I'm not going to always get the power-ups that I want. I'm going to have to settle for some ones that are a little bit out of the way. Like if I were smart, I would have grabbed that one back there, but instead this guy's going to steal everything. There we go. So this is an example of extreme weather, and in this cup of seven tracks we're going to have an extreme weather race, we're going to have uh, a couple of normal races. We're going to do one called Burn Off, which means you do one fewer laps than normal. And you're going to have an Endurance, which is one more lap than normal. It's supposed to have, on the sixth race, what they call Peacekeeper. But that one is where there are no weapons. However, for whatever reason, and I'm going to go with Oversight and a moderately low budget, they just have that one as a normal race, even though it says it's Peacekeeper. Bridge jump. There we go. Also, just uh, if in case you're wondering, hey, where are all the Extreme G games going? Uh, Acclaim went out of business after they made this game. I'm not going to say that's related, because I always hope it's not, but you never know. This, of course, being the fourth of the Extreme G games. First, you came out on N64. Extreme G3 came out on PS2 and GameCube, and then this one on 
uh, PS2, GameCube, and original Xbox. So we got a cutscene skip coming up here. Playing, and I just went to go split. Don't have to split, that's great. Acclaim was a very poor movie. Yes, Acclaim was very, very poorly run. And now, I think when it went to sale uh, a few years ago, it uh, got just like bought up by like some like. Since they had stopped playing, uh, making games a long time ago, and then that IP got sold for like peanuts to some people that don't even use it. I don't even know. I think they wanted the logo or something really, really silly. Anyway, but what's interesting about the Extreme G series is that all four of the games are kind of radically different from one another. One and two are the most similar, and I think that's mostly just due to the limitations that existed on the N64 and the fact that they were released pretty close to one another. But then you have Extreme G3 kind of plays like a, a like an F0 GX knockoff, and then XGRA is kind of its own little beast. Try to, on some of these tracks, have an idea of where you're going to have a drought of power-ups. Like right here, there's nothing I can grab, and so I want to make sure that I'm going at max speed to that section. And I can get three more up here, and we're back to max speed. One of the places that uh, Extreme G games outside of three really strive at is vehicle variety. In this one in particular, you've got three different handling styles of vehicles and a bunch of different weapon varieties for your standard weapon, which doesn't really come into play in the speedrun because all we're really interested in is going fast, but we've got uh, the tight handling, the power slide handling, and the hybrid. This is, and uh, basically the best way to race is the tight handling for sure, because you don't lose as much every corner. In fact, the slower vehicles that still have the tight handling end up being faster overall than the faster vehicles with the worse handling, so it's kind of unfortunate. Wow, $1,500, that is a pretty huge uh, accomplishment, I and mean, I'm proud to be part of it, and we're going to keep on pushing it more, see if we can get even higher really helping out people in need. So that's... Uh, that's really... <laughs> that's really, really good. We're gonna keep moving here on forward, and as you can see, I'm already starting to, you know, have power up stolen right in front of me. It's pretty great. To just kind of have the backups in mind. In fact, we can even pop up here and snag a couple of extras, which is, you know, good to have some game knowledge. Now that we're starting to get in the clear again, where once you're in a five lap race like this, we'll all of a sudden still have some lapping everybody, and then once we lap everybody, usually the fifth lap, you can kind of just go all out and you don't have to worry about anything anymore. One of the things I love about this game is its very odd soundtrack, and it actually uses a lot of licensed music. In fact, it's all licensed music just from a wide variety of like late 90s and early 2000s artists. I've currently got it set to mix, but it actually does give you the option of mix, all dance, or all rock. And the, the probability of different tracks popping up, uh, different musical tracks, changes based on um, the the track you're currently racing on. There's also some weird stuff going on with there and the way this game calculates all of its like RNG, which is basically just enemy movements and the music that gets picked. And it seems that if you race roughly at the same times, it ends up being... Uh, it ends up being... Uh, like the same music, but there's really no reason for why that would be the case. It's just kind of an interesting little thing. 
So this is easily one of the harder tracks we have to deal with here, and that's mostly because we've got very tight turns, and at the speeds that you end up going in the ultrasonic class that this is currently running at, you run into the issue of you're going to hit walls. It's not an issue of, oh, just don't hit them. You're going to hit walls. You're going to pinball to an extent, and you have to kind of plan ahead of how do I want to ricochet so I don't lose as much time as possible. In fact, there's some sections of this and every course where I'm planning where I'm hitting the wall because I would have to actually slow down substantially if I wanted to hit them, and that would it would lose more time to take what would look like a clean turn as opposed to just go for it. And so you kind of have to start planning for that kind of stuff. So we still have some pretty chill music. You are a I'm liking that. This game still has its fair share of mysteries. Like uh, we'll see in a couple tracks. There's a weird thing where that little cutscene that I end up skipping where it puts up the first place flag and then I can actually pause and quit out and I still get credit for the race. Uh, that sometimes will just not happen and it consistently doesn't happen on the fifth track here. But we've all gotten it to happen in a few other places but it's really inconsistent and it seems to be somewhat tied to your times that you're getting but we haven't quite figured that out. If we could ever figure out a way to get that consistently, then that would save a pretty significant amount of time. It'd probably save like a second a race, which is, you know, that's no, nothing to complain about. We're all about saving little bits of time, especially when the margins are so small. So this is a just a standard race. No extra lap like the last one. No weird weather. There's also a modifier where some of the races can take place at night. Um, in, the, in the arcade mode, you can freely select all the different things so that you can get exactly the race you want. This does support four-player multiplayer, uh, offline only, because it's a GameCube game, but that is uh, more fun you can have. Pretty much once you get into that situation, you're no longer trying to go as fast as possible, and you instead try to abuse the the crazier items you can get by getting all the way up the tree because then you can get uh, like a one-hit KO item which only is a one-hit KO on computers it was not it brings humans down to one health but then you can just follow up by shooting them in the back and that's definitely the more fun way to play the game as opposed to just you know spamming accelerators and trying to go for lap times if you're playing against your friends you just want to embarrass them by blowing them to smithereens When we get to, uh, we're going to have a speed limited race in a little bit, and when we do that, I will do my best to showcase some of the other weapons, because we'll have plenty of time. That's basic, it turns basically into auto-scroller. If you know the right lines, and you avoid the pit of death, then everything's fine. the next one. So this is a burn-off. So this is a three-lap race and has the only instance of a required braking of the entire run, which is right here. If I don't hit the brake there, I slam into the wall and lose all of my speed. We get some rock music. This is actually my favorite song, the entire soundtrack. Around here. 
This track is among my favorites, even of the ones that don't get really thrown in the run. There's 14 tracks in total, 7 will be shown here today, and if you're going to do a run of all the tracks, you do it in a different mode and you get to see all 14. And this is pretty action-packed. So you'll see the arrows in the ground, and it probably stands to reason, just like any other racing game, that those are giving you speed. Those are speed strips, and those remain active all the time, as long as you're contacting them in some way. Those get... oh wow, I'm really stupid. There we go. If I ever pass up the power-up I want, I can cycle back, but I can't cycle forward once I've deselected something. So. There we go. I almost threw away the power-up that I wanted. No distinct version differences between this and PAL, so wherever you are in the world, if you want to give it a shot, give it a shot. We're always looking for more players. opting to skip that speed strip just to make sure that I have all my power-ups I need before I get up here so I can have the accelerator stack with those speed strips and get me the most speed I can get. Oh, wait's not awful. Yeah, that's the spot I wanted to avoid last time, but... I had that one. So I always have backups in mind for when I mess up because I'm definitely gonna mess up. to enter Auto Scroller. It's the speed limited run. You'll see what I mean about that. So now you'll notice none of these speed strips work. So this is all a pure race. We have just the basic racing lines, and that's it. The only thing I really have to worry about in this particular race is at about a third of the way through, there is a place where the track diverges and it splits into two. And if you fall through the hole, you lose nine seconds per lap, which is a lifetime. <laughs> As long as we avoid that, uh, it's kind of just smooth sailing, keep everything normal. I'll try to get all my power-ups, if I can get one more, I can show off the Death Strike, which is this. Alright, he's gone now. So for every kill you get in this game, uh, for the up to first two kills, you actually get in a power-up to your regular weapons. So now, instead of firing regular rockets, I fire a whole rocket salvo and this can be used to get even more kills. There's even a warmonger mode where you can earn more uh, points per race by getting kills. So this would actually be a good time to show off the mines. Get people off the back. See if I can do a bit more of a weapon showcase. So you saw earlier when I was in that tunnel that green stuff, that's a vampire that siphons energy from my vehicle onto theirs and slows me down a bit, which is really unfortunate. 
that's one of the rare instances of you know, RNG being a problem. With four power-ups, or in this case three, you get a shield that makes you completely vulnerable to all damage for a few seconds. That's really good if you're concerned about getting blown up. If you're interested in destruction, you can go... There we go. You can get ammo, and if you just watch bottom left, as I'm firing my rockets, it depletes my weapon energy, and then I can fill it back up. Which seems uh, like that's a lot of time you have to spend collecting power-ups just to refill your thing that refills automatically, and you're right, but uh, this game's weapon system's pretty broken. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. Like, it's a racing game, and the one that makes you go really, really fast, it just, like, is the third cheapest to get? That doesn't make any sense. It's like Mario Kart just letting you have infinite stars. So, pretty good lap time so far. Let's see what other weapons I can drop. Oh, one of my personal favorites. Grab a couple more. Hopefully we'll keep it halfway decent line. One more. So this is the rapier, and if you're like, oh man, all these people are getting a ball inside me, you can just activate this and cut them in half with lasers. And it's great. Pit of shame. Good. How am I doing today? I'm doing great. Uh, I'm really looking forward to showing off these games this weekend and helping people out. I'm sure that Shuli's. Um, I see she's in chat. Hopefully she's enjoying XGRA at least to some extent. I hate everyone at person, but I love you. Oh, well, thank you. I really appreciate it. <laughs> so good. I, I'm really glad to be included in this event. I really like this event, and it's um, it's good stuff. I like getting to show off my obscure speed games that I dump all my time into, instead of the popular games that everyone likes. <laughs> so this is the Overlord. This one is actually just like a straight up nuke. Um, it's fantastic. Like, by far, the games that I've spent the most time speedrunning have been the two that I'm going to show off this weekend. Uh, this one today, and then Rogue Leader tomorrow. This is actually the first game that I ever bothered to speedrun. It was uh, when I wanted to get into speedrunning, I was first looking into uh, learning some stuff in Donkey Kong Country 2, which is just one of my favorite games. And I'm like, this is fun, but you know what I want to do? I want to route a game that no one's ever done before. And so I went through and I did uh, did this one. It's great. And I spent way too long learning how to optimize it. And I've been speedrunning it for like, God, four years now, almost. Anomaly 19, this is the hardest track in the game, for sure. You can bleed time so easily here, it's not even funny. So, uh, this track, I learned something about last night when I was practicing, which is if you hit 
this one section at really high speed, you clip out of the track and you fall to your doom. However, because it's a vertical section, you fall really slowly and lose a lot of time. So much so that I should have PB'd by 5 seconds and instead finished 1 second over. So, I'm mad at this track right now. So as you can see, there is an abundance of speed strips and abundance of power-ups, and you just gotta be on your A-game with them all. Nice! So the, <laughs> the game's uh, contract system, if you were playing this in campaign like the first time, you would pick a team, and oh, guess we're going this way. Uh, and then, based on the team that you pick, you'll be given assignments, and you complete those assignments, and you can get a better contract with a better team and get a better bike. Uh, but once you beat the game once, or if you use cheat codes, then you can just get the best bike right away. For the record, I recommend just using the cheat codes and getting the best bike right away. It makes the game more fun. Actually been a very good lap. I'm happy with this. Good. Keeping them under 110 is nice. So this is the race that's supposed to be Peacekeeper, but because Acclaim did some Acclaim things and didn't really pay attention, uh, it's just a regular race. I didn't want to be on this section of the track, but. They're about the same. Let's run there. Good. A little breathing room. It's not going to be quite so bad. That's one of eight. Very good. This is kind of a fun little block in the marathon because it's all racing games, and it's actually, weirdly enough, kind of all my favorite racing games, which makes me extra happy. We've <laughs> got um, some DKR coming up. Love DKR. We already had Kirby Air Ride. That's another favorite. I would play... If I could you know, professionally just do Kirby Air Ride City Trial, I'd find a way to make that work. Why do we need Smash Run back? All Smash Run was was Smash Brothers City Trial. For those of us that played a Smash in the 3DS. Sakura, the old one trick pony. Alright, one race left. So when I cross the finish line at the end of the fourth lap, that's time. No, 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 no. When I cross of the of the of the last track. Yeah, okay, I'll take a trip. So 
This one actually has some of my favorite tiny little time saves in it. Uh, there and this game's not super good about making the cool path the fastest path, but in this particular track they do. So coming up here, as soon as we get into the sandy area, we're uh, there we go. You can kind of maneuver through all these rocks, which is really daunting at first, but then you play this track as much as I have, and all of a sudden that's just the way you do it. Uh, anytime you're in the dirt here, you lose extra time, so making sure that you have an accelerator running is extra vital. And then something I discovered yesterday, which I actually hadn't really thought about before, is in general, you don't want to be in the air, because you're only really gaining speed as long as you are, um, touching the ground, because the accelerators aren't afterburners, they literally just make your wheel spin more. And then I just was looking at my speedometer and I'm like, oh, I guess it's actually slightly faster to just be in the air, since being in dirt loses so much time. So I need to test that, because I've figured out that for sure on one of the other tracks I did earlier, it saves a little bit of time to just kind of like, cruise through the air. And now I need to try that with some of these other ones, but to safely <laughs> just kind of catch some air. Got some pretty brutal music too. And then scooting in between those railings there feels nice, even though it's not hard. Catch some air there. Yeah, that's faster. Hot damn. Well, now, now I got something to practice. Always discovering stuff new. So any of you have any interest in XGRA, even just casually, we have an Extreme G Discord. You can get there from any of the Extreme G pages in speedrun.com. Stop in, say hi, talk about racing fast. Uh, we have guides up for pretty much everything if you ever want to learn how to speedrun it, all the different techniques and tricks, and I'm always willing to answer questions. This game's just kind of my baby. It was, it had no speedruns of any kind before I decided to uh, just kind of dump all my time into you know, learning everything I could about it. And so if anyone else shares that kind of a passion for it, by all means, let me help you. I will gladly do everything I can to get you going fast. Last lap, it's been pretty good. 112, that's nice. Uh, my best lap time's a 111 something, so I can cope with the 112. Again, thank you very much for, as I'm kind of wrapping up here, last 30 seconds of it for my uh, time here. Thank you very much for having me. Please, if you can, get those donations in. I'm sure, we really appreciate it. And uh, looking forward for the rest of the great runs we have going on today. Thank you all so much, and have a wonderful time. Be around tomorrow to see you for some Rogue Leader. It's going to be great. It's going to be a really, really nice marathon. And that's time. Three, two, one, race. Yay. Oh, that's fine. 33 foot. 
that's great. That sounds fantastic. Uh, so, thank you all so much, and I'm signing off now. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your time.